آله وصحبه ومن ولا اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا إنك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم إني أعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي How is everyone doing? Please forgive me, I just have to make sure the online is working. I think it is. Yes, it is. So how is everybody? Do you know what we're going to be talking about today? No? Why no? No, I need to know. Why no? You are not on the Rahman newsletter? How many are not? Well, then you need to be. <laughs> right? How many are not are on Jannah Institute newsletter or their email? Then you need to be. Because these both will tell you, right? So you need to know. You don't want to come. It's always, I mean, you can look at it this way. It's good to have surprises, but it's also good to be prepared and you know what to. So let me ask you this question. How many of you, they say, I definitely have a temper? Temper. MashaAllah, everybody here is like a malaika, angels. You never get upset. I need to see hands. Okay, now we are talking. Right? And how many says I have a, a temper? When you are, when I get upset, don't be close to me. How many? Meaning, meaning, saying things inappropriate, throwing things maybe slamming doors allah knows what comes out of your mouth how many well i'm glad i'm talking about this we were wondering should we do one or two of these but we decided we're gonna do one because the last two will be on the most important two which is the disease of the tongue the tongue my tongue which is the most important tool to get me close to Allah and the quickest one to stay to pull me away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's talk, Bismillah. What is anger? Okay, I'm speaking English, right? <laughs> right? Okay. Alhamdulillah. And everybody speaks English in this room? Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. What is anger? And the people from online also, you're more than welcome to write and I'll read it to share it with you. What is anger? I'm sorry? Getting out of control. Pain. Pain? Okay. Pain leads to anger. But what is anger? What do you feel? Uh, let, let, the young lady, come on in. I love to hear it. Getting mad. Right? They, take the, they say, take the wisdom from the mouth of the children. So, getting mad. But what does it mean? What do you feel? Frustration. Uh huh. Loss of control. Anything. Loss of control of your what you say. Loss. Loss of control of how you handle your hands. Loss of control of how you react and say. So that's a good one. Definitely, it's loss of control. What else? Yes. Loss of control of your thoughts. Loss of control of your emotions. You're overreacting, you know? And if somebody wants to get you upset even more, what do they tell you? You're overreacting and you get even more upset, right? And this is actually one of the ways to get people used to get you upset. So let's start in talking. And this is very nice, actually. It's one of the best books written about anger. It's very precise, concise, but covers a lot. They say the following, and I'm gonna be reading and translating. They say anger is literally Literally, a flame from the fire. Shu'latun min nar It's a flame from fire. What do we normally say? Figure of speech. In the Arabic language, what do we say? Dami bifur. Right? My blood is boiling. What do we say in English? Or in Urdu? Or in any other language? Spanish. I don't know Spanish. Somebody has to teach me. Right? But it's all goes into this category. Something in me is boiling. I feel it, right? And, the, and they say, this is exactly what it is. It's a torch or it's a flame 
from the fire. And actually, when the human being gets upset, that's exactly what Shaitan does. It's he makes me and you act exactly like him, as if we are him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he in the Quran said, the shaytan, the devil said, خلقتني من نار وخلقته من طيب. You created him from clay and you created me, shaytan, from fire. So when I am upset, I have a flame and sometimes flames, sometimes it's all me. I am fire, true or false. And you feel it, exactly. I love the, the emotion of the true. That means you feel it, perfect. What happens, we're gonna, we're gonna look into the following. What makes me upset? And what anger leads me to? And what should I do? And what is the opposite of it? Inshallah, I will have enough time because I wanna end up with examples of those who were so much irritated and how did they respond? Literally, when I'm, I've read this book, Allah knows how many times, but every time I read this, especially this chapter, I was like, Ya Allah, give me what you gave them. So let's start from the beginning. When you get upset, what happens? Meaning, how do you react? What's the result of it? Saying things, hurting people, and usually regret. When you calm down, most of the time, what do you do? You say to yourself, and if you are, inshallah, all of you are humble people, and you sit down with yourself and you say, you know what? I didn't say things right. I need to go and apologize. I need sometimes to be more in control. Don't we all do that? What did the Rasul the most famous hadith that I'm sure everybody in this room either know it by heart or have heard about it? What is it? Related to anger. Mumtaz. When the Sahabi, the companion, came to Rasul and asked him a question, simple, awsani, advise me. And the answer was one word. Don't get upset. Don't be angry. And he said, Awsani. Okay, I understood. Give me a second time. What was it? Same story, same answer. La taghdab. Third. What did he say third time? Don't get angry. And even scholars, when you read this hadith, they tell you specifically to the Sahabi. Because there's so many other companions came to Rasulullah asking for advice. And each one he gives different. And they say, obviously, and by the way, we don't know the name of this companion. None of the books say which companion is this. They say, the reason he said that, because that's his problem. So when someone comes to you, everything we will say, we're going to learn in my daily life. If someone comes to me and you say, Sister Haifa, you have a temper. I shouldn't get upset. But normally, what do we do? We get very upset. No, I don't. Immediately, we become Defensive. When I become defensive, I will never change. And I say this to myself before anyone. If you don't listen to what people tell you, even if they are wrong, but you listen, then you go home and think of it and filter it. And you take it and say, they could be right. They could be wrong, but they could be right. Filter it, that's how you learn. So they say this Sahabi specifically, with no name, has an issue with temper. And that's why Rasulullah sallam three times. Which one of us, and you all have to ask yourself, you don't have to show your hands. If I asked Rasulullah sallam this question, would he have told me that? Would he? You answer, don't answer here. You think of it. So that's number one. And the second Sahabi, which is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he came to him, to Rasulullah sallam and he said, what is the one thing that will for sure protect me from the anger of Allah. Now, not the anger of human being. What is the one thing that only one, he wanted one, to the point, you know, we don't have time, give me the bottom line. So this is how the Sahaba came to Rasulullah What is the thing that will move me away? Remember, this is the path. Will move me away from the anger of Allah? He said, la taghdab. Don't be angry. Don't get upset. So that's number two. Number three, Rasulullah said the following also. This is very nice hadith actually. He said the strong person 
Well, how many of you say you're strong? And I'm not talking strong physical. You say, I'm strong. You're strong. How many say, MashaAllah, the younger lady says, I'm strong. Okay, alhamdulillah, I love it. What's her name? Yasmin, my niece is Yasmin. MashaAllah. And she didn't say Jasmine. He said, Yasmin, the right one. Alhamdulillah, may Allah protect you, Yasmin. So he said, Rasul The strong person is not the person who win in wrestling. You know, when you fight, when you play, no. He said, it's not that person. Now, now the answer. The strong person is the person who control himself or herself when they get angry. Let's say it one more time, because there's so many things you will learn from this hadith. A strong person is not the person who's strong in physical body, but the person who control, look at the word, meaning you control yourself when you get angry. What does that mean? Getting angry is normal. Feeling anger is expected, true or false? Is it good or bad? No, not always, not always. It depends why you are upset. What made you upset? Did the Rasul got upset? Absolutely. What made him upset? I need to hear it. What made him upset? Okay. So what made him upset? The, the, the Sahaba described him. He said, we knew when he got upset. That means he did. Because his face changes. Nothing. What made him upset? When Allah has been disobeyed. Now look at all of you. May Allah reward you all. I love it. All of you chose to sit on the floor. I love that. That's actually give us a good idea for next time. But how many of us, and don't answer me, this is all questions for you. When you go home, ask yourself, how many times you get upset because someone said something or someone didn't say something? And how many times you got upset when you see one person disobeying Allah publicly? How many disobedience of Allah we see every day? Where do we start? I'm talking about Muslim. I'm not talking about non-Muslims. I'm talking about Muslims. The way they dress, the way they behave, the way even in the masjid, do we get upset? No. They are free, they do whatever they want, Allah will take them accountable. But when someone says something about me, I don't say Allah will take them accountable. La, how dare they say this about me? So remember this, the best of the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him as Allah made an oath by his life Allah made an oath by the life of Rasulullah He only got upset when he, when the Allah's rights were violated. And look at every time he got upset and put it in which category? So the person who is Strong is the person who control himself when he gets upset. I'll, I'll tell you a couple of stories. Iblis, Shaytan, came to Sayyidina Musa. And he stood in front of him and said the following. Musa, beware of getting upset. Imagine this. I'm going to read it in, in Arabic because I, I could see a good number of people understand him. He said, فَإِنِّي أَلْعَبُ بِالرَّجُلِ الْحَدِيدِ I play, I turn the person who gets angry the same way when a child play with the ball. You have no control. He, get, he gets control over you once you get upset. And he said, beware of women because this is the easiest tra uh, trap for men. And that's actually the wasiyah of Rasulullah So don't be that woman. I don't want you always when we learn, don't think of other people. Think of you. Am I that person when I get upset, Shaitan, now I am a ball in his hand? Am I that woman 
who he said, beware of, two and three. And he said, and beware of being miser. Because miserness ruined the deen, ruined faith. And anger is three kinds. Let's see which one we have. We have the excess, which you all acknowledged. We have the lack of, and we have the Mahmoud, they call it, the praiseworthy anger. So the one that is not praiseworthy, which we just talked about, is two things you ask yourself in this. What made you upset and how did you react? What made you upset and how did you react? And then you can categorize this. Any of the prophets got angry? Who was the prophet who was well known to be angry? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, right? Why did he get angry? Because someone said something about him? Because Fir'aun did not listen to him? Why? He got upset with his people and he got upset with his brother, right? It's in the Quran, it's not my word. Go and read Surah Taha. قَالَ يَا هَارُونُ مَا مَنَعَكَ إِذْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ ضَلُّوا أَلَّا تَتَّبِعًا أَفَعَصَيْتَ أَمْرِي He said, Mu'z Harun, what made you? And he, in the way Allah said it in the Quran, if you read it, you feel the anger. يَا هَارُونُ, my brother, what made you not act when you see them, when you saw them going astray? What do we do when we see people not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Our own people our own family, our own sister, what do we say? That's when he got upset. Second time when he got upset, when he came back and he saw his people, what? Worshipping the calf. Is this is because of him? Is this is because someone said something about him? That's me. And then, look at the word Allah used in the Quran. When the anger Second is, is to be quiet, but it's not to be quiet in this case. When it is, went down. What did he do? Calm down, thought, akhad al-alwah. He was upset, so he threw the tablets, took it out, took it back, and he continued his journey. So when you get upset, two questions. What made you upset? And how did you react? If what made you upset, and I'm going to, Category, and I'm going to put it clear. Other than something displeases Allah, you need to look at yourself. That's not pleasing to Allah. That's an obstacle in my path to Allah. Someone didn't praise me. Someone said negative about me. She did not invite me. She said this. They said this about my children. This is all not pleasing to Allah. The only time I should feel angry internally, I'm not saying externally, is when I see people not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've seen people cry when they saw the disobedience to Allah. Living in this day and age, cry like a baby because they saw someone disobeying Allah in the masjid. A woman. Both were women. With no word. Where are we? We get upset about ourselves. Then, feeling it, that's natural. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us differently. How do you react? How many in this room? Alhamdulillah, we have a very good number. One day you're upset, absolute full control. Show me hands. Full control, not a single word comes out. Not a single word comes out, nothing. That's even less than 1%. Why? What makes us upset? Now the question. Ma sabab al Number one. Can anyone tell me? Number one is something we talked about two weeks ago. Absolutely. It's al-kibr. It's ego. It's my ego. How dare she say this about me? How dare they don't respect me? How dare they don't? Look at it. Think of yourself, right? What makes you upset? How dare she doesn't listen to me? Or he doesn't listen to me? How dare they do that? The way, the moment I say how dare, my ego is talking. So number one is ego. Number two, 
which we're going to talk about it next week. It's jealousy. I get upset when someone is better than me. I get upset when they have more than I do. I get upset when people praise them, they don't praise me. She get the job, I didn't get the job, right? And what does that mean? Wallahi, if you dig into these, to the root of it, you will be so shocked. When I get upset when someone gets something I don't get, what my reality is saying? Ya Allah, you're not just. You gave her and you didn't give me. Because who gives? And who takes? Right? We don't think of it this way. When her husband takes care of her and you look and you compare and get upset. Who gave the husbands? So number two is jealousy. Number three, which is really interesting. You know what is it? It's joking. Oh, I was just joking and they get upset. And that's why there's always a limit to the joking, especially the youth. Joke, but don't overdo it because people get upset. Well, I didn't mean it. Well, it came out. So number three is upset, is, is joking. Number four, think of it. What makes you angry? Arguments. Argument. When you need to prove you are right. And that's, by the way, this is also the root of it, is kibber. It's arrogance. And I get so upset. I told you. Why you're not listening to me? Who said she's not listening to you? But they have to say ameen. I say this to myself. They don't say ameen, meaning I'm absolutely correct. Then I get upset. Argumentation. And this is why when you are arguing with someone, anything, anything. Sometimes I can't believe what people get upset about. And you start feeding the fire. What should you do? Rarely people do it. Stop the argument. Move. Move. You're not going to remember to do wudu. You're in the middle of the argument. And especially if you are right. Especially if you are right. And you know you are right. And a good possibility you are right. And the Rasul said, Whomsoever, leave argument. Leave. Man tarak al You leave the argument. And you know you're right. You're right. What's the reward? Get a, a palace in Jannah. How many of us does it? And then you say, I was right. And you come out and you're so happy. That's kibber speaking. That's kibber arrogance speaking. What else makes us upset? I'm sorry? I can't hear you. This is it, because it's you. Because I think I'm better. Why do they compare me with somebody else? It's all arrogance. The root of it, number one, is why did Iblis get upset? What? I am going to prostrate to whom you created from mud? It's anger. Why? Because I'm better. It's all root to, to arrogance. Please forgive me. I don't mean anybody in this room. But this is, if you deep, dig deep down, you will find this. And this is why. One of the treatments of anger is what? When you immediately get angry, what do you do? What do they advise you? Other than wudu. Is you put your cheek on the earth. And I always wondered, why is that? They said, put your cheek, not your face. Is your cheek. Feel it. That's who you are. That's who I am. That's where we started, and that's where we will end. You like it or you don't like it. What were we talking the other day? Right, Yalena? Minha khalaqna kubu fiha nuhidukum. From it we created you. It is earth. And what's earth from? Dust. So this is why if you think, if you can think, reality you will respond very differently. And Allah said it twice in the Quran. He praised them. And look what he said. It's in Ali Imran. Some of you may know it. وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضَةِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ 
Let me translate. Look what he said. Those who control and contain their anger. He didn't say those who doesn't get upset. He didn't say those who does not get angry. Rather, those who contain their anger, meaning it's normal. It's actually a protective mechanism for us to have the anger. It's actually a protective feeling. But if the, the downside or the anger becomes negative is when I respond in a way not pleasing to Allah. So he said, those who control their anger, one and two, which is the harder one, you forgive and pardon people. Who doesn't make mistake? Who's perfect in this room? For sure it's not me. Anybody in this room is perfect? You can't claim it. You claim it, but you're not. Right? And then you move to the next station. Then I move to the station of those of accidents, and I will qualify to the love of Allah. Do you want Allah to love you? Do you want to be among those lists that Allah will check and says, oh, you're Muhsin, go. You want? Yes or no? Then you need to do this. I, I love this verse. It's in Ali Imran. And the next one Allah said in Surah Al-Shura. When they get upset, that means getting upset is expected. The feeling is expected. So don't feel bad. Don't tell me who doesn't get upset. I'm going to tell you everybody gets upset. But the, but the difference is, what do you do with the feeling? Those who get upset, what happens? Who knows the end of it? It's amazing the end of it. They forgive. How hard is that? Someone curse you. Someone, as we say in the Arabic language, meaning he literally, he or she, they said everything, let alone it's not true, in public about you. And then you come and says, I forgive you. How many can do that? No hand. I don't see even a finger. Not a hand. Not even a finger. Has anyone does it in their, did this in their life? Once, at least. At least. And you were so upset. Like the, the blood is boiling. Then, then you need to do it all the time. One time is not enough. One time is not enough. Now, they said, quick practical solutions. Number one, remember what I just shared, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about those who can control the anger. This needs reminders. You need to remind yourself, especially if you are a person who has temper. If you are a person who has temper, when was the last time you lost your temper? Completely. If you're going to tell me yesterday, you're in big trouble. If you're going to tell me I don't even remember, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So again, it's individual. And don't tell me because. It doesn't matter what is because. The answer is, the question is not why did you get upset? The answer is when did you get upset? And how did you react? So number one, think of all the virtues. All the virtues. You know when you fast? How hard is it to fast? It's very difficult. In Ramadan, here, what made you do it? Because you were thinking of the rewards the same thing. And you need to remind yourself, not when at the moment when you are angry, before, so it becomes natural. You know, when you have it ready, and then it comes out right away. That's number one. Number two, this is how I always did, did it and I was taught. Think of you and me, all of us. How many times you have got upset? How many times we upset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many times you have said things it's not pleasing to him? How many times you have done things not pleasing to him? True or false? Anyone can claim never? Nobody. What did he do to us? What did he do to us? Nothing. If Allah will take us, accountable for everything we do, there is nobody who will stay moving on this earth. That's in Surah Al-Nahl, 
and he did it at the end of Sabbath. Think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we are doing this. If you are always having Allah inside your heart, when these moments comes in, he will come to your rescue, especially when you are controlling it for his sake. So think how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many times I've made him upset. If I make a list daily, Allah, the list will be none ending. Start from the morning till the evening. What I said, what I didn't say, what I did, what I didn't do, what I, all the, his rights, how many I violated in a day, how many rights of people I violated, which means I violated his right. And he still feed me and forgive me and pardon me and wait for me. Come, 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 just, just repent, you're there. And I cannot forgive someone because they said something about me. Okay, they were wrong. What was the big deal? They were wrong. Think of it this way and don't you ever, and this is practical, don't you ever talk to someone that's the answer you will hear from them and you did not say a word to them and you stayed quiet? Don't you do that because that's what your nafs will tell you. You want someone to come and tell you, come on, come on. We've, we've grown up, that's done. Done there, done that, been there. You know this, this phrase? It's okay, you grow up. It's okay, we all do that. You want someone to what? Calm you down and make you think of your shortcoming so you don't see the other person shortcoming huge. The other thing, be aware of the result of it. Homes being destroyed because of anger. How many times you've heard that home divorce completely three times because of anger? And done, done. Look at where, where we are living. What is this all mass shooting is all about? It's anger. It's all about anger. But then because there is weapons and there is uh, uh, guns available, people react this way, right? Other parts of the world, they react differently. But it's anger. The root of it is anger. Whether it's discrimination, whether it's injustice, whether whatever it is. But it's anger, the root of it. So you need to think what this will lead to and what will lead when you calm down. Practical tip, those of you who have a temper, you need to fast more, not Ramadan, not even Monday, not even three days a month, at least Monday and Thursday. One of the best ways to control your nafs is to fast because you're not giving her what she wants. And food is a big thing for the nafs let alone tea, coffee, things. So you need to fast a lot. And two, you need to spend time alone. It's so hard for the nafs to stay alone. What I mean alone, alone, not alone in the room with this, or with the, that's not alone. That's not physically with people, that you're with people. Spend time alone, and that will calm you down. One thing, another thing is, what made you upset? You need to think of this. This is called muhasaba. You take yourself accountable. What made you upset? And then you come down to yourself and you say, how many times I've said something similar to people? If we apply, I, there's one hadith. This is personal, this is me. I say, if people apply it, we all will live in peace. What is this hadith? If we, only one, if we, everyone, Every Muslim, let alone every human being, if that person applies it, we all will live in peace. If each one of us, can anyone think of it? You will not be a true Muslim unless you love to your brother or sister or you love for yourself. You don't want to be insulted, don't insult people. You don't want people to say negative things about you, don't do it. You don't want people to not treat you well, don't do it. Don't expect when you treat people not well, people will treat you well. This is only angels and a few, very few people. Reality, it is not. So if you apply all these, that's why we're learning together. Because these, these, this kind of knowledge needs to be practiced. It's not you write it down. You know, when we do our year of knowledge course, that's almost going to be done at the end in two weeks, the only subject, there is no exams in it at all, is the tasqiyah. 
I said, I don't care what you score, because that's theory. I need you to tell me what happened to your character at home. What does people around you in the house say after you learned all this? Did you change? Did you become closer to Allah externally and internally? Is your thought, has your thoughts changed? Has your reactions changed? Practical, say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. Move. This is the best way I have seen it. Move. And don't answer. Literally zip it. And if you, can, if you cannot ask Allah to teach you this. You know when he shut down? I'm sure you all have, have had this. And he said, I couldn't say a word. That's what you need. Say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. If you can remember, go ahead and do wudu. Why? Why wudu? Because anger is fire, and wudu is water. So every time, here you don't live in a very cold weather, but when it gets cold and you turn on your fireplace, right? if you did it with real wood, right, or you do a bonfire, how do you turn it off? Just put water on it or you put dust on it, right? Same thing here. Anger is fire, so I go and do wudu. What I found personally also, when you say, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, literally it's a fire extinguisher. When you really say it, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, La ilaha illahu, what happens? Because you seek refuge from Allah to protect you from shaitan, and all anger is from shaitan. So A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim, do wudu, change your position. Standing, sit, sitting, stand, and the best way is move. Especially if you are in argument with people, with person, move. And, and the Rasul ﷺ, when he saw someone very angry, they were arguing. What did he say? I know one word. If he said it, he will not get upset. What was this? That's why we have anger problem in this room. Because <laughs> you don't know what to do with it. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim. Who doesn't know this word in this room? Seek refuge from Allah. Literally, what you know what A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim mean? You just say it very casual. What does it mean? I am seeking refuge from whom? From Allah. From what? From Shaitan. So will Allah not respond? Will Allah not help me? Yes or no? Of course, yes. And can Allah, is Allah capable of controlling shaitan or push him away from my life? Absolutely. So keep saying this. And the more you say this, it, like become a habit, it comes when you need it. This is what you need to train yourself, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are always in a state of dhikr, it comes when you need it. It comes natural when you need it. Now let me share with you some examples Opposite, what is opposite anger? Forbearance. al -hil. Forbearance, right? And he said, well, how many of you you think you can change? Show me hands. I can change for sure. Okay, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Don't lose hope, because that's what the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said. Inna mal ilmu bit ta'allum, wal hilmu bit ta'allum. And this actually you apply it. Wal sabru bit tasabbur. Basically, Everything is changeable. You want to learn? You need to learn. You want to be patient? Practice, study, and practice. And you guess what? You'll fail. I'll fail, but I'll get up, and I'll change. It will take time, but it will. And there is one of the Sahabi called al ashad ibn Qais. This is the most famous hadith about the Sahabi, opposite that Sahabi. He looked at him, Rasul Think of this, think of yourself. That Rasul come to you and says, there is two things in you, I, I, Allah and me loves. Two characters in you, that's what he said. Pika khuslatan, yuhibbuhum Allah wa Rasuluh. There's two characters in you, Allah and Rasul loves it. And he said, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? He said, al-hilmu wal -ana forbearance and patient. There's a difference between forbearance and patient. Patient here meaning opposite rushing things. 
And al Hilm, you don't lose your temper. And then he asked him and he said, is it something this was given to me? He said, yes, it was given to me. He said, alhamdulillah, look at what the Sahabi said. Look at their humbleness. He said, alhamdulillah, Allah gave me something he and his Rasul loves. He didn't say I worked on it. Oh, of course I am. The way we are, praise ourselves and we think we are. And he said, alhamdulillah, two characters, al-hilm, forbearance, forbearance, well, ana, be patient, take your time, don't rush to things. Now I'm going to give you the examples. Are you ready? The examples is going to blow your mind. Number one. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas. Do you know who's Abdullah ibn Abbas? Everyone in this room knows. He's the cousin of Rasul right? He's a young man who Rasul made a dua for him that Ya Allah teach him this deen and the inner meaning of the Quran. They call him Hibrul Ummah. They call him like the ink of this Ummah. So this is Abdullah ibn Abbas, not you and me. And a man cursed him publicly. Shatama, this is how they say it in Arabic, curse publicly. Because this story is related to us by other people. And he listened. When the man finished, look at me and you when someone starts saying negative. One word we respond, 20, if not 100. He didn't say a word. He finished. What did he say? He looked at Ikrima. Ikrima is a, as a follower. He said, yeah, Ikrima, see if this man needs anything we can do for him. The man put his head down. And he felt so ashamed. This is Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, it's not you and me. Right? And he cursed him publicly. Imagine this is, here we are, right? And who are we? And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas comes in and one of us jumped on him. Not a word. He didn't answer. And not only he didn't answer, he not only forgave him, but how did he respond? With ihsan. Excellence. Do you have anything we can do for you? Look at the second one. Muawiyah, who was the Khalifa, the president, right? He cursed him and he said a very harsh word to him in, in public. This is the president, this is the Khalifa. They, it was said to him, look at how people sometimes don't help you in control. He said, they said to him, why don't you punish him? What he said. I feel so ashamed that I don't have enough patience to accommodate one person get upset. See their, their level of manners, how they look at themselves, how they take, how they hold themselves higher standards, not people, themselves. He didn't say this person who was he. He said, I should be more patient. He didn't say, how dare you say this, look at you. He said, I should be more patient. I feel so ashamed, I can't be more patient. Now, a man came to Abidar. This is so beautiful. A young man, actually, a gulam, a boy, came to Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, Sahabi, companion. And he was kept dragging with him a sheep of Sayyidina Abu Dhar. And in front of Sayyidina Abu Dhar, he hit the sheep and he broke her leg. What is that for? What is that for? And, and he said, who did that? The boy looked at his face and said, I did it. And then uh, Sayyidina Abu Dhar, and, oh, he said, I did it purposefully. So you get upset and you will hit me. Look how irritating this is. This is Sayyidina Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, right? Not you and me. And this is a boy. I did it. So you get upset and you hit me. What did he answer? Oh, he said, I did it, so you get upset, so you hit me, so you will sin. Wow. How annoying is this? Look what he said. He said, by Allah, 
whoever send you to make me upset, I'm gonna make him even more upset. Go, you are free. And he gave him money. Where are we? And look at the next one. Adi ibn Hatim. This is a Sahabi, the son of Hatim al Ta'i. And man kept cursing him publicly. And he is quiet. Not a word. He finished. The man finished. Adi looked at him. If you still want to say more, go ahead. Please say it. What was he saying? Cursing him. He said, if you still have some, go ahead and say it. Before people come in, because if the people come in, they will say you don't have a good manners. You are all so quiet. <laughs> I was like, these people living in a different century. They are not. They're human beings. They're like you and me. Allah created them the same way you and me. What is the difference? What is the difference? Don't tell me I can't be like them. Why not? Why not? If anyone should be more upset than us are them, because these are the companions of Rasul Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah, not you and me. And look at this one. A man came, requested to be with Sayyidina Umar. This is actually a very famous story. Sayyidina Umar, and he was the Khalifa. So a man came to his majlis, to his sittings. Who sits there? If you only read about Sayyidina Umar, who sits there? The like of Sayyidina Uthman or Sayyidina Ali, the major Sahaba, and Sayyidina Umar. He actually, this man, is the uncle of one of the people who are very close to Sayyidina Umar. He came from outside, and he asked from out of town, and he asked his nephew, asked Umar, make sure he allows me to come to visit him. And he came in, and that's, that man is Al-Hurr ibn Al-Qais. So the man entered in public, stood in front of Sayyidina Umar and said the following, Ya Amir al muminin the leaders of the believers, Ya Amir al muminin actually he didn't say Ya Amir al Ibn al-Khattab, look at the lack of adab, the son of al-Khattab, this is Sayyidina Umar, by Allah, look what he said. مَا تُعْطِينَا الْجَزَلْ You don't give us enough. وَلَا تَحْكُمُ بَيْنَنَا بِالْعَدْلِ And you do not rule between us with justice. Who is that? Who is he saying to? Umar. What is the nickname of Sayyidina Umar? What is Al-Faruq mean? What is Al-Faruq mean? The one who can very clearly separate justice from injustice. That's why it's called Al-Faruq. Right? لَوْ كَانَ نَبِيٌّ مِّنْ بَعْدِ لَكَانَ عُمَرٌ Allah Rasul said, if there will have been a prophet after me, it would have been Umar. So this man in public, like imagine this is me here, and I am not Sayyidina Umar, I am not his fingernail. And this person comes in, and, and you are all I love you, but you are not Sahaba. I wish you are, and I wish I am, but we are not. Right? So a woman or a man comes in here and starts saying this to me. Wallahi, you do not give us enough. And you not, do not judge between us with justice. What happened to Sayyidina Umar? He was so upset. They could see it in his face. This is how they know. The son, the young man, who this is his uncle, came to Sayyidina Umar, Hurr ibn al-Qais. And he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, listen to this. Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers. Allah said to his messenger, look how they speak. Allah said to the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he caught this ayah. This is in Surah Al-A'raf. Meaning, make your character as pardon. In general. He said this to Rasulullah Make pardoning people is your, is your character. And enjoy what is acceptable in the community. And the third one. This is why he said it. Stay away from the ignorance. By Allah, he is ignorant. 
What did Sayyidina Umar do? And you read this even in Tafsir Ibn Kathir about this word. He said, Wallahi, ma tajawazaha Umar. Once he heard it, he didn't do anything. Did not respond. And he can. And he's able. Wahukkalah, as we say. And he has all the right to get upset. Sayyidina Umar doesn't, does not uh, uh, judge people by injustice. This is his character. He didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. Again, where are we? Listen to this one. You know Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? Right? We, we mentioned his name. So he's the fifth Khalifa. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz one day entered the masjid in the night. Dark. There was no electricity, right? And there was a man sleeping. And as he was walking, right, he stepped on his hand or feet. The man jumped and looked at him and says, are you crazy? Amajnoon and another virgin says, A'ma ant? are you blind? This is Amar ibn Abdul Aziz, he's the leader. And of course, all he was with his guards. And the guards tried to jump on the man. And Sayyidina Umar Abdul Aziz says, what's wrong? Why are you jumping on the man? He asked a question, are you blind? And I said, no. Are you crazy? And I said, no. What is the issue? What a heart they had. Ya Allah, what connection with Allah they had. Imagine that somebody say this to you or to me, how we will respond. But you didn't know what she said to me. This is the first thing. When you come and say, calm down, it's okay. But you don't know what she said to me. Couldn't he said that? Simple. He asked me a question. Are you crazy? I said, no. Ya Allah, look at this one. Rajul Ali ibn Hussein, the grandson of Rasul Rasul. And he met a man. And again, he cursed him. Sabba, cursed him. This is the grandson of Rasul Rasul. Yani the, I'm sorry, the great grandson, the son of Al Hassan. What, what uh, lineage he has, right? Who's his grandmother? Sayyida Fatima. Who's grandfather? Sayyidina Ali, right? And this is their son. So a man, they, they were walking and met a man, and the man cursed him. Fasabba. Fatharat ilayhi al Habib. People ran and they're trying to get to that man. Fakala mahlan. Sayyidina Ali says, wait. Wait, what's the issue? Mahla. Then he came to the man. Wallah, when I read this, I was like, I try to imagine this. I close my eyes and I want to feel it. So he said, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Imagine this here, right? He said, just a second. And he walked to the man, right? And says, are you ready to what he said? This is the great grandson of Rasul Rasulullah. He said, what you don't know about us, way more than what you said. ما سترك ما سوتر عنك أكثر من من أمرنا أكثر. What has not been shown to you way more than what you just said. What is this called? Ah, humility, humbleness. ما سوتر عنك أكثر من 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 أمرنا أكثر. And then he said, Do you need anything we can help you? Anything we can do for you? فاستح الرجل. The Rajul became so shy. And then Sayyidina Ali had a, like a khamisa, like an outer garment. And he threw it on the man. The man cursed him in public. And he gave this to him. And then he said, give him 1,000 dirham, which is like more than $1,000. What did the man say? And he kept saying, by Allah, I witness you are from the lineage of Rasul it's by actions. It's by character. This is what I say always to myself, number one. Everybody is nice to the people who are nice. If you're not nice to those who are nice, you have a huge problem. Where is my manners comes in? Where is my deen come in? Is when people who are not nice to me, that's where my deen comes in. That's where Allah taught me comes in. That's where Allah, I see him first, comes in. And that's why sometimes, unfortunately, you see, and I, I, subhanAllah, very recently I got this 
comment from someone. I got an, a, a question, and the question included this comment. She said, I'm very uncomfortable putting hijab. And I was like, why? And she was saying, I really want to do it. But I just see the people who practice the deen are not very nice. And I responded, that's not true. Because there's people who doesn't practice, practice the deen, and they are also not nice. So let's divide people to nice and not nice. But it really hurted me. Why? Because we don't want that. Shouldn't be at all. Because we are different. This is our deen. These are real people. This is real people. The last one I'm going to end, and then we can open it for questions and answers. A man came to Wahab ibn Munabbir, and he said, a man cursed you. You know what he said to him? Shaitan didn't find anyone else to send you to me. Did you get that? How many of us will answer this way? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us this. Ya Rabbi Ameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna attiba'a wa arina al-baatila baatila warzuqna ajtinaba. Allahumma alhimna al-hilm wa alimna al-ilm wa sabrna bil-sabr innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. A'udhu billahi an udhakira bih wa ansa. I seek refuge from Allah that I teach you something, I remind you of Allah and I don't do it. If I've said anything correct is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I said anything that's not correct is from me and my ignorance and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us all. I think the that even the mic felt bad today. <laughs> any question, any comment? I love to hear the youth, because that's a big problem with the youth. Not the youth, only the young people, like children. Have you seen children when they get upset? It's mine, right? It's my iPad. It's my toy. Toy, three, four years old. Fight. So anybody wants any comment, any question? I know it was hard on you, but what, yes, please. Uh, Sister Gabby, it's not working, Habib. Yeah. Is there ever a time where it's inappropriate or okay to disguise yourself? To, uh, appropriate to do what? Is it appropriate? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Very good question. There's, the question has to be two parts, is how I will say. When is okay to get upset? And we said that. When the right of Allah is violated. When the Rasul rights is violated. Then I need to get upset. And if I don't, I have a problem. But there is no excuse, never, look at what I said, never an excuse to respond to that feeling inappropriately at all, and I shared with you the examples. Even when Allah is, right is violated, if I respond in a harsh way, then I violated the right of Allah. See? So this is why they always say, Let it be the way you enjoin good in a good way. And let it not be the way you enjoin good in a harsh way. So there is no excuse to be harsh. It doesn't matter what the person in front of me have done, because then I'm the same. I am the same. What is the difference? Muslim or non-Muslim, young or old, I'm the same. And this is why when I get upset and I know I am not going to be able to control, this is what we just said, leave. Don't say anything. Literally, zip it, zip it. Then you are fine. And if you feel that you are going to be throwing something or slamming doors or whatever, don't do any of these things. Go and make wudu or go outside, breathe. Do any of these things, but don't let it build up. And definitely don't call someone. That, that someone will make you even more upset. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately. How many people you call and they tell you, come on in. Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah sent you a way for you to get closer to him, respond, don't respond, you don't have to, come on, who's perfect, how many times you hear this? No, what is usually? So yes, there is reasons to get upset, but it's the way we react to the feeling that there is no excuse to be not in the proper way. How did he respond when they violated his right? Did, he viol did they violate his right? 
absolutely you name it. Did they call him names? Did they throw garbage on him? Did they kick him out of his uh, city? What did he do? You all know it. Alhamdulillah, you all study Sirah. But this is here. Not here. Any question? Yes, please. Examples that you shared with us, they were, they were uh, when a person in power. So, person in power. Did not exercise his, his power to respond to another person who was cursing. Okay, so the person in power. So the, okay, so the scenario person is cursing a person, yes, and, and there is a person of power. Yes. Yes. And then ordinary layman comes and curses him. Okay. And and he responds in a different way. Okay. Right? So these are the examples that you shared. Yes. If you can you give us an example where it is a person who does not have the power to respond if he's feeling anger. So let's say a boss and employee. What do we normally do? This is I'm glad you brought this. Because when we don't have a power, what do we do? We say nothing because we're scared. This is how, I'm glad you said this because they say always their anger is when you think you have power. You think. And when you don't have power, you get sad. I wish I can have, I wish I have said that. I wish I can say that. In both ways, in both ways, the feeling needs to be tamed. And when I don't have power, I'm not going to respond. Or these days, what do we do? We go and write on the internet. And we go and say things which is, I wouldn't say all of it is not right, but there's a lot of exaggeration. That's an inappropriate response. I hurted people. And the best way, I have found it personally, the best way is I always think how much Allah is angry with me. And he still feed me. And he still give me life and it still give me roof, and it still give me all this, and I keep doing it. And one person one time said, whatever, whatever, the end of the world. I think we all, and everybody in this room, myself, into, I think we all need to know our reality. Who are we? Human being, please forgive me, we're nothing. Nothing. Sooner or later, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be? And six months after where we are be, where are we going to be? Nothing. If you open a grave after six months or a year, what are you going to see? Nothing except some bones. That's who we are. Right? A man, I'm glad I remembered this story. It says it's Al Hassan al Basri. Right? And he was, a, a, a prince came in with all his entourage walking in the street. Al Hassan al Basri was sitting and people were sitting. People stood up. Hassan al Basri did not stand up. Because that's not the sunnah of Rasulullah And the prince got so upset. Don't you know who I am? Hassan al-Basri. How did he answer? Look at the hikmah. He said, of course I do. And he did not put him down personally. There's no personal attacks. He said, nah. And I'm going to say it in Arabic, it translates. وَسَتَكُونُ جِيفَةٌ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ نُطْفَةٌ مَذِرَةٌ وَسَتَكُونُ جِيفَةٌ قَذِرَةٌ وَبَيْنَهُمَا تَحْمِلُ الْعَذِرَةٌ Of course I know who you are. You started as a spoiled sperm. And you will end up as a dead corpse. And in between, please forgive me, you carry the feces. That's us. It's true. He didn't attack him personally. He didn't say you and you and you. He said general. Again, we all need to know who we are. Who we are, reality of us. Who, you, who we are. And then we calm down. The problem also of anger is because we live in a very comfortable life. Everything we want, we get it. Literally, when I go, I still, when I go to the grocery store, I stood up and I want to buy a, a, an apple. It's a choices. I was like, Rabbi, why do I have all these choices? Can I just have one? 
the more we think we have and we can and we get access to, we think we are entitled. And the more we are entitled, we get upset when we don't get it. Or when people didn't give us what we think we are. So the best way is when we take time and think who we are and think who is Allah. Think who is Allah subhanahu May Allah teach us, Ya Rabbi. I mean, there's a question from online just to give the online people their do right. They said, how do you balance between being forbearing for the sake of Allah and being repeatedly uh, dishonored and oppressed? The balance. Because people think you're weak when you don't respond. Right? They think you're weak. What is the balance? If you learned anything, this is the fifth week. It is the fifth? I think it's the fifth week. If you learned anything from the last five weeks, can anyone think of everything we learned from the beginning? So here I am. I'm controlling my anger for the sake of Allah. But people think I'm oppressed, I'm weak, or I feel it, or shaitan comes and tells me you're weak, you're going to keep taking it. What do you respond to yourself? What do you say? I'm sorry? I don't care, I, I'm doing this for Allah. It's a good answer, but it, is it really, that's how we respond? No. Why? You need to think of the reward of what you are doing. And don't see people, think of this. You only see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's seeing me upset. He's seeing my rights being violated. And he is the one who can give me victory. And I am controlling my anger for him, subhanahu. I don't say a word. Again, it's not saying is the best. And wallahi, and this is for Fatima online. When you do this for Allah, wallahi, he will give you your rights. It's going to come to you. Just be patient. It's going to come to you on a plate of gold, if you want to use this word. And those of you who have done that and felt that, you know what I'm talking about. Whether it's at work, whether it is in your home, when you don't do anything, how Allah will give you dignity. Man kana yuridu al-izza, fa inna al-izza talillahi jamia. You want to be dignified? Seek it with Allah. Don't seek it with people. They don't have it. It's only He who has it. Uh, one time, someone I know were asked, "Tell me what you want. I'll give it to you right now." And this came from a person who is very wealthy and capable. You name it. And this was a woman. She responded, I want one thing and you don't have it. She said, I want Jannah and you don't have it. That's Izzah. That you're dignified with Allah. You know what I'm saying? Let's elevate ourselves. Let's not be, yani, let's not be qalilin al himma like our resolve is low. We accept anything. No. Allah dignified us as a human, let alone as a woman, as mother, and then as a Muslim. And let people think whatever they, how many times you people look at you and think you are absolutely oppressed because you wear hijab. I shared some stories with you the other day. Are you? No. Do I need to prove it to people? Please forgive me. No. No. Allah will, Allah will defend me. Inna Allah amanu. Allah defend those, the believers. I don't, I, I don't like the word, I don't care, because it's used in a negative way here. But I, my focus is on Allah. What he thinks of me, and he will defend me. I do things for him, he will defend me. And that is it. And what people think, let them think. Could be right, as we shared, and they could be wrong. Allah will teach them. Take it as simple as this. Don't take it personally. This is the problem. When we take things personal, and we think we are entitled, this is how we respond. Any other thing? I don't know what is even the time. Okay, five more minutes and then we have to stop. Yes. More than welcome. I loved it today. You're also focused today. I think it hit home today. <laughs> right? I can see that. And even online, mashallah, we had a lot of people and many comments. Yes. Can you speak up, please? What about in the case of, for example, abuse, like in the home, where no one else is going to step in or know, and 
for like a crime, for example, especially in my mind, I'm thinking maybe against children who are viewed as a mother or a woman. You need like, to get up. You, like, the, you need to get upset, but find a solution. Right? So there is an abuse. We see it, subhanAllah, in the house. Leave. Leave. Take them away right away, of course. This is the un, um, unpraised anger. If I see people getting abused and I do nothing, then that's absolutely ghair mahmood. This is not praised. But me responding in a harsh way, it will make things worse. I need to think of solutions. How I'm going to protect these children? Take them away. Leave. That's when I tell the woman, always, when woman comes to me, should I leave this marriage? First question I ask is there is a physical abuse. Physical abuse is dangerous because you can respond in a very harsh way and you don't know the response. That's why people get killed. And that's why children get abused. So absolutely, there is things I need to respond. My, my point, if you take nothing today, you need to be angry, but it's the way you respond that needs to be tamed, that needs to be done in the way that pleases Allah. But I can't be numb. I see all this abuse happening, it's not my business, then I am not. Then I, this is not what pleases Allah. They call it al-ghiratu lillah, when you feel angry for Allah. It's absolutely praised, but how do you respond? Take actions immediately and plan. Leave it, take them with you, leave. Better than things happen. And may Allah protect everybody. What is this young lady? Ask me what question you have. I can't hear you with this beautiful pink mask. He was angry, but he never acted. They could see it in his face with so the question, the youngest, how old are you, ask me? MashaAllah, she's nine. And look at the question. Has the Rasul ever been angry? Yes. Sahaba actually always described him. They said, we know it in his face. At all. He never hit with his hand. He said two things. Sahaba, when they described him, we're actually going to have, uh, uh, in our year of knowledge, year two, we're going to teach Shama'il, him, alayhi salatu wasalam. They said, in his hand, there's two things he never done. Does anybody know? Two things. He never used it to hit anything. And he never shook a hand of a woman. Never. Never. It, with his hand, there's two things that Rasul did not do. Never hit with his hand and never shook the hand of a woman. No. What? I can't hear you because there is not... No, the mic is not working. Last question, or otherwise, it's two more minutes. Alhamdulillah. Everyone, Ya Rabbi Rikal Ham, Jazakum Allah Khairan, Subhanakallah, Homo Bihamdik, Ashadu and La Ilaha Ila and Estaf Yuruka, what to Bulik, Sola, Ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Wala Ali, who was Habi Testim and Kathira. We'll see you next week, inshallah. It's going to be jealousy. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's, that's the response.